Economy of expression means that we're going to try to keep our writing very short. Say only what needs to be said. Pages of a journal, you know, are limited. Now, I think this is a little bit funny because, of course, often when we think about this and we're writing a thesis, we think longer is better. And I guess that may be true. If your professor tells you something like you must write 100 pages, well then, you have to write 100 pages. But usually, shorter is better, and especially in publishing, always shorter is better. So if you're submitting your paper to a journal, or you're submitting to a conference, then for sure, shorter is always going to be better, no matter what. So how can we get things shorter? Well, you can try to eliminate redundancy, that is, repeating something. Don't say the same thing twice. I know sometimes you want to make it very clear, so you say the same thing again. And when you say the same thing again, you're hoping the reader will understand it very clearly. And no, that's not true. One time is enough. You don't need to say it over and over. Wordiness. Try to make your sentences. This is the sentence level. Read your sentence and then begin to cut out words. Can I cut this word? Can I cut this word? Can I cut that word? And as you cut the words, does the sentence still make sense? If it does, then it's too wordy. Jargon. Special words and phrases that you think are interesting and make you sound smart, but actually the reader may find is just wasting space. Evasiveness is when you're writing about your research and you're trying to explain, well, maybe it didn't have statistical significance because, and maybe because, and I don't know, maybe because. So you do a lot of these things where you're trying to make it sound like you're not very clear. So that's being evasive. Avoid that. Passive voice. Passive voice. That's the difference between the active voice, I washed the car, and passive voice, the car was washed by me. So this is very different in research writing because you want to always be sure that who did what and what did they do. So you would never say that a survey was taken by. Uh, you always want to say this person A responded to survey B, something like this. What did person A do? Not what did I have done to them. It's, it's too complicated. So you want to keep your sentences very simple. And in this way you actually get a little bit of a break. By making your sentences active, that is, researcher A tested B. Variable A has a relationship with variable, variable B. By doing it this way, you make your sentences shorter and clearer, which automatically makes them better. Circumulocation. I love this word. Circumlocution. Cir I can't say it right. I love it, but I just can't say it. Circumlocution. This means that you're going around in circles. That you're saying something, and you're saying almost the same thing again, and then you're saying almost the same thing again. So watch out for that. And I think it's very common in Chinese uh, writing, and so a lot of my students do this. Clumsy prose, that is, writing things that just are not very smooth. Of course, the, the best way I think to solve that is try to make your sentences short. Don't write too much detail. Overly detailed descriptions of your tools, your apparatus, such as your microscopes and your surveys and your, uh, all the different things you use in your research. Don't write too much about the participants and the procedures. Of course, you want to write enough that the research can be replicated, done again, but you don't want to write so much that it really becomes too much detail and the reader already knows that kind of stuff. Don't say things that are obvious. So you don't want to say that you gave a survey and uh, it was a paper survey and the paper was A4 size and it was the 80 pound weight paper and we used black ink and white paper. You don't need that much. People already understand what you're talking about. Don't include things that are not really key to your research. These are irrelevant observations. Okay, the economy of expression, that is how do we keep things short, basically. Short words. 
and short sentences are always going to be better. And I think that no matter what, this is the best advice I give to my students. But you know it's the hardest thing for them to do because they're trying to make something clear by writing more. It's actually harder to write your sentences shorter. Avoid wordiness, too many words, based on the fact that. Here's a great example. What do you think about this sentence? Oh, well, it's not a sentence, it's a little bit of a few words together here. Based on the fact that. Is this a, a good thing to say? No, this is way too wordy because it's based on and then the fact that. Why couldn't we just say based on or just say the fact something? Or, in fact, just skip that whole thing and just say what you want to say. Because. This seems like a really great word, doesn't it? No, no. Bad word because. <laughs> You're just using it to stick in the sentences to take up space. At the present time. Why would you write at the present time when we already know what you're talking about is the present time? So you're just wasting space. Now, the same idea. You don't need to do that. For the purpose of. You don't need to explain for the purpose of. Just write what it is you're trying to tell me. For. To. These are all words that are uh, wasting space, that are not, do not have good economy of expression. Try to cut them whenever you see them. Avoid redundant language, that is, saying the same thing over again. They were both alike. So here we have they and both. It's the same thing twice. One and the same. If they're the same, then they must be one. So again, this is wasting space. A total of 68 participants. Isn't a total of 68 participants the same as 68 participants? So we can just cut those right out just like that, right? Isn't that the same thing? In close proximity. So you could be close or you could be, uh, well, I guess we just say close actually, right? Close to instead of proximity. Or you could be in proximity to, which means, again, close. So it's the same thing twice. Completely unanimous instructions, which were exactly the same as those used, something, something. This is an example sentence. So completely unanimous. Of course, if something is unanimous, then it would not be, you, want, you don't need the word completely. Avoid redundant language. Let's do a few more here. Very close to significance. Of course, if it's statistically significant, then it is significant. If it's not, it's not. So you cannot be very close to significant. Absolutely essential. These are two of the same word, right? You could just say essential or you could say absolutely. Period of time. Time is already a period, so you don't need to have a period of time. Has been previously found. Of course, previously found is very clear. You do not need to say has been. Summarize briefly. Summarize already means briefly, so you could cut briefly. Small in size. Small already means small in size. The reason is because, or you could say just because. What about paragraph length? Well, this is always a great question students ask, and of course there's no very clear rule about paragraph length. There is not one best paragraph length. However, uh, we can say in general, as a rule of thumb, single sentence paragraph is too short, and uh, a really long paragraph is too long. So let's look a little bit more at this. A new paragraph should begin a single idea. So. A single idea, of course, could be a single sentence, but in general, that's too short for a paragraph. You want to have at least a few sentences. But how do you decide where your next paragraph begins? That really comes down to this idea of a single idea. Are you beginning a new idea? And is this new idea kind of part of a process of your ex explaining your research? So, there's no way to say exactly how long a paragraph should be, but in any case, not too short one sentence and not too long, meaning not too many ideas, one idea, not two ideas or three ideas. Break them into another paragraph.